A new episode of Living World Season 4, Back in the System, was released, and I am here with quick overview of this patch. It features items, achievements, and generally with all news it's bring on the table. As usual, I've made a Teco marker pack for notes, chests, portals, and other related stuff. A link is down below. A new map, Sandswept Isles, is located in southeast corner of the world, just above the domain of Easton. The landscape is a mix between beaches and foresty grounds on the north and large inquest structures at the south. The story missions are quite long and with interesting new mechanics, but no more spoilers here. A new mastery allows you to temporarily swap Mount Hellbar with yours. It works almost like a heal, but only for a few seconds. The map is unusually overfilled with small events and also with two metas. In the first one, you have to calm down the storm by killing large elementals, then short escort event and legendary boss on the end. The second one, the specimen chamber, happens deep inside inquest area but you can get there rather quickly through portals spawning all over, one just next to the waypoint. In the pre-event, you have to defeat up to 50 waves of golems, which makes it pretty insane karma and loot farm. Since it has instance-based timer, you can jump maps and do it over and over. The second part is about killing 4 random champions in the chamber itself. The map has 4 hearts with usual new minis, recipes and one endless tonic. One of them sells an amazing item called Prototype Position Rewinder. You can mark a location and within 30 seconds use this device and pour it back from any place on the map, even mid-air. It's endlessly usable in any open world area and the best part, it has only 30 seconds cooldown. You can also participate in 12 new bounties, one adventure, two regular and one griffon races. The volatile magic vendor sells a classic set of items. A note for the home instance, portal scroll, ascended ring and earring and karmic and experience buffs for further farming. The map has a new currency called difluoride crystals, what can be traded for various goods as well as consumed for volatile magic. Unlike in the previous episodes, this one has account daily gathering cap, but fortunately pretty high one. Achievements are quite easy and fast to do. Grant slightly over 100 AP, 4 mastery points and 2 very interesting collections, both with multiple tiers. The first one end up with free 32 slot backpack what sorts consumables and boxes and the second is evolving golem backpack with 4 skins in total. The meta achievement will reward you with a decent shoulder pads. You can get those from reward tracks as well. We've also got a new legendary weapon, a char themed two blade dagger called Claw of the Khan Ur and few minor changes in other parts of the game, namely thick held bar options for party and squad, multi-world filtering in LFG, randomized instabilities in fractals with new icons, concentration and expertise in fusions at world vs world traders and some Heart of Thorns adventures are now slightly easier. And in the end, let's not forget on Gemstore. We've got a very cool branded mount and mini spec, new eye colors and char horns. That's all I had for today, so if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment and stay tuned for next time.